The CFA and the FRM, two very popular finance qualifications that will help you stand out in any career within the worlds of finance, investing and risk management. But how exactly do they differ from one another and which one should you do? This video is kindly being sponsored by the amazing team over at Analyst Prep. Hit the link in the video description below to get 20% off all their CFA and FRM resources. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is for those of you who are studying for or curious about the widely popular CFA Chartered Financial Analyst or FRM Financial Risk Manager qualifications. We'll touch on some of the similarities and differences between the two, the costs, the content covered in the material, the career prospects, the salaries, so on and so forth. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. What is the CFA and what is the FRM? The CFA stands for Chartered Financial Analyst and it's provided by the CFA Institute. The FRM stands for the Financial Risk Manager and it's provided by GARP, the Global Association of Risk Professionals. Job titles of CFA holders typically include portfolio managers, bankers, asset managers, fund managers, investors, research analysts, and so on and so forth. FRMs typically pursue more niche and risk management focused careers within investment banks, asset management firms, large corporations, or government. CFAs tend to have broader career options as the topics covered within the different levels of the CFA can be quite broad and varying, whereas those who study the FRM can be limited in their career prospects if they focus specifically on FRM, which focuses mainly on risk management techniques and risk management practices. Costs. How much do the CFA and the FRM cost? For the CFA, the program enrollment fee is typically $450. Now, all these fees that I quote are always changing here and there, so it's always worth checking the relevant links. I'll link a few useful links in the video description so you can check the actual prices in case they might change from when I publish this video you know, to in the future at some point. Anyway, so the program enrollment fee for the CFA is $450. And then for each exam, you need to pay a fee. And these fees can be anywhere between $930 or $50 to $1,000 per exam. Therefore, for free exams and the enrollment fee, it will set you around $3,300 to $3,500. So do keep in mind, there's an early registration, which is cheaper, where you can save a few hundred dollars. There's a regular registration and there's the late registration. The late one is obviously going to be a bit more expensive so definitely consider signing up early if you're going to do a CFA exam and then you've got the study materials so for every exam you're going to need to study right so you're going to need the relevant books and study materials these can set you back anywhere from $500 to $1,500 so all in for enrollment, for registration for free exams, and then for the study materials for each exam, you're looking at anywhere between $4,800 and $8,000 plus. And then you have to consider potential retakes. CFA exams are hard, all three levels are tough, and the pass rates are typically around 40 to 50%. So most people that take the CFA exams actually don't pass. And so there are a lot of retakes, and each retake costs around $1,000. And on top of that, to make things worse, you probably need to buy a new study materials because they're always updating it's a way they make money right that's a cost that you have to factor in as well and then we've got frm so the enrollment fee for the frm is typically 400 dollars and then to sit part one is 750 dollars and then to sit part two is also 750 dollars now these fees tend to change and so once again look at the relevant resources i'll link them below so you can keep up to date with any price changes therefore all in for enrollment and two exams is anywhere between 1500 dollars to 1900 dollars and once again they also do you know early registration and standard regular registration early one is cheaper standard is a bit more pricey and then once again you've got study material costs so these will set you back between $500 and $1,000 for each exam so you need to take that into consideration as well and so enrollment two exams and the study materials for each exam will set you back between $3,000 and $5,000 in total once again you need to consider potential retakes this will cost anywhere between $550 and $750 $50 per retake and then obviously there's potential new study material that you might need to buy because of the content continuously being updated 
If you're studying for the CFA or the FRM or you hope to do so in the future, you should definitely consider using Analyst Prep as a dedicated resource to help you pass either qualification. They've got a ton of study notes, practice questions, mock exams and video lessons for you to use. They cover every chapter of FRM level 1 and 2 with over 93 hours of video lessons, as well as tons of similar resources to help you pass each level of CFA. So this is the dashboard and you can see how you're performing relative to other Analyst Prep users and you can see your progress in each of the different topics. And then we've got the question bank. Here you can access questions specific to each topic and there are lots and lots of different questions for each topic. And then we've got lots of different mock exams which will always be useful for you. And then we've got a section dedicated to customizing your own quizzes. So if you feel like you want to create a quiz with X number of questions on a specific topic, Analyst Prep allow you to do that. And then we've got the chapter reading. So if you feel like you need to brush up on a few topics or chapters, those are all available in your account. And last but not least, they've got tons of high quality video lessons that will help you cement the key concepts and ideas in order to help you pass the exams. Analyst Prep have over 50,000 satisfied customers and best of all, their products are cheaper than what you might get elsewhere in the marketplace for similar products. If you want 20% off all their CFA or FRM resources, use the code AFSAL20 at checkout through the link in the video description below. What content is covered in the CFA and what content is covered in the FRM? In CFA, the topics that are covered are very, very broad and you don't go in depth as you might in the FRM when you're focused on risk management. So in CFA, you're covering topics such as portfolio management, economics, corporate finance, ethics, accounting, derivatives, fixed income investments, and equity investments, and so much more. In FRM, there are less topics covered, but you dig deeper into each one. So you're covering topics such as quantitative analysis, value at risk, derivatives, credit risk, operational risk, basal norms, and current issues in financial markets, as well as more, but you dig a lot deeper. So that's key thing to understand, and it's all related to risk management for the most part. So if you're wondering how much can you earn after doing a CFA or an FRM qualification, so the range of salaries for CFA holders is typically between $45,000 and $180,000. And then the typical range for FRM holders is $50,000 and $165,000 per year. Caveat, obviously this depends on the industry, the seniority, the title, the level or years of experience and many other factors. So do take that into consideration. Some of you might be thinking, can we have both the CFA and the FRM? Yes, you can, but do keep in mind that not only are these exams huge commitments, like they take a lot of time and we'll go into that in a bit, but they require a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and they're quite expensive as well. Yes, you can get your firm to pay for it, but doing both, it's very rare, but it's definitely allowed. But just keep in mind that the CFA opens your doors to more career opportunities. And the FRM, once again, is quite niche and it's focused on the risk management practices relevant to most corporations. So how long does it take to get the CFA or the FRM? And what do you need to do in order to get the letters after your name? So for the CFA, there are three exams. And so that's three levels, level one, level two, level three. And each one, the recommended study time is 300 hours. So that is a lot of time to put into any exam. So it's a lot of work. Typically you need a degree. You need four years worth of relevant work experience in the world of finance. And you need to pass all three exams, obviously and then you need to be a member of the CFA Institute. So it costs like annual membership of like two, three hundred dollars. Don't quote me on that. But uh, typically if you if you get your firm to pay for your exams and all of that, they will cover the annual cost of membership for the CFA Institute. So every year you need to renew that. CFA Institute are making money. But yeah, that's the position they're in. They can do that. And then for the FRM, there are two levels. So level one and level two. Each exam they recommend to study around 200 to 250 hours. So less than the CFA. To get the letters after your name, you need to have two years of relevant work experience. You need to have passed both the exams. You need to do every two years, 40 hours minimum of ongoing education and training. So CPD, this is where you attend workshops, do online training relevant to work and risk management practices and all of that good stuff. And that's about it. So pass the two exams, have two years of work experience and do ongoing educational training, 40 hours every two years. 
Okay, now let's talk about exam dates and your options when it comes to taking exams. So in 2020, obviously there was the pandemic, so a lot of CFA exam takers were interrupted. And so the CFA is offering the level one exams six times in 2021, and then CFA level two and level three are being offered three times in 2021. In 2022, the CFA level one will be available four times a year, and then level two twice a year and level three twice a year. The reason why level two and three are offered less than level one is because level one is the most popular and then quite a few people fail and so not many people go on to do level two and three and so there's probably less demand compared to level one. Pass rates for CFA exam, how hard is it? So for the December 2019 numbers, the pass rates were around 40 to 45% for level one and two and then for level three, it was like 56%. So these exams are not easy, so it's worth keeping that in mind if you do consider signing up for them. In terms of the structure of the exams, level one CFA is 180 multiple choice questions, level two is 88 multiple choice questions, and then level three differs a bit in that it's eight to 12 or eight to 11 essay questions where you write, and then there's 44 multiple choice questions. And then we've got FRM. In 2021, part one will be offered in May, July, and November, and part two will be offered in May and December. The format of both parts of the FRM is multiple choice so there's no essay questions in either of the exams. The 2019 pass rate for level 1 was 42 and 46 percent in May and December respectively and the 2019 pass rate for level 2 was 61 percent and 59 percent for May and December respectively. Level 1 has 100 multiple choice questions and level 2 has 80 multiple choice questions and you get four hours for each exam. So typically, if you don't want to pay for the costs, the thousands of dollars for the CFA or the FRM, I would say wait until you secure an offer at a big bank. It's kind of chicken and egg because part of you is like, shall I wait, get into a big firm, get them to cover it, or I'm not in a position to do that. Do I need the exam and qualification first in order to break in? So this would depend on your current situation. Personally, obviously the best route is once you break into a grad scheme or any big investment bank or asset manager, they will cover all the costs, they will pay for it all. What Goldman's did and what a few firms do is they make you pay for the exam and sit it and all the study materials and all of that and they reimburse you and cover your costs only if you pass. But this will differ firm by firm, so make sure you check with your firm what they do. But if you can get your firm to pay for it, it's a huge cost off your shoulders. So definitely do that. If you are struggling to break into a bank or an organization, then it might be worth you know doing part one or level one in order to show that you've taken the initiative, you've taken the proactive approach, to kind of kickstart this so it shows on your CV that you're a bit more serious than some of the other candidates that are applying for any given job. For more on the CFA and FRM, check out some of these videos. Hit the like button if you made it this far. Thank you for passing by. Get 20% off using the link in the video description and I will see you in the next video. Peace.